Indian Air Force completes 84 glorious years in the service of the country on 8th of October 2016. On this occasion, let's glide through the evolution of a nation under the precise guidance of its brave soldiers in the sky. Guided by the principles of courage, discipline, excellence and honour, Indian Air Force protects the nation during wars and crisis. Today it is the fourth largest Air Force in the world. But the beginning of this formidable force was quite modest. Indian Air Force was incepted in 1932 as an auxiliary of Royal Air Force. During its inception, it barely consisted of four Western Wapti and four Royal Air Force trained pilots. World War II presented a magnanimous opportunity to showcase the valor of the force. And indeed, the valiant officers proved so valuable to the whole operation that the British government bestowed Indian Air Force with the prefix Royal, which at that time was an immense honor. Number one squadron of the Indian Air Force, the Tigers, known for its precision strikes, electronic warfares and air superiority, today was the key player even back in the day. The Tigers were the one who landed in Burma with their Westland Lysander aircraft and bombarded Japanese air bases under the command of Royal Air Force. Air Force officers came back with 22 distinguished flying crosses pinned to their chests. A bound button belonged to the royal family. He had the habit, when he visited an Air Force unit, he just straightway climbed up of the aircraft, stand on the, on the wing of the aircraft, and give a speech. And after that, he visited one squadron. That was in fall. Me, he called me in the dispersal area, gave a speech, and then he called me over there. What do they say? The Queen has agreed to give you this, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, distinguished flying class to you. It's only given from uh, a father bravery in, in accurate fighting. Throughout the period of one year, uh, nine DFCs, including myself. Now that, actually, that's a record anywhere, even in the Royal Air Force. That was a memorable chapter in the diary of Indian Air Force. Though the nation was not free, but Indian forces were already making their mark on the global platform. The struggle of Indian independence, partition of India and the Jammu and Kashmir dispute are well-known aspects of our history. Indian Air Force played a remarkable role in all of them. Nineteen forty-seven was another crucial year for India and its forces. Excitement of independence and the thrill of coming out of the shadows of Royal Air Force were empowering the soldiers. But this excitement was soon dampened by the invasion of insurgents from Pakistan into princely state of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Air Force evolved from a mere coastal flight in 1932 through what's perhaps the most incredible war Indian Air Force was involved in in 1947-48 in the state of Jammu and Kashmir when Pakistan attacked it. It was a great miracle that Indian Air Force provided in that war and that Jammu and Kashmir would not have been a part of India today. Ladakh certainly not if the Indian Air Force had not airlifted troops into Srinagar following the attack by Pakistani irregular and subsequently regular forces and uh, ensured 
that fighter aircraft were deployed in that war of the Pakistani regular forces, in fact, to throw them back uh, beyond the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian Air Force never shied away from protecting the people in need. It embodied the spirit of India. A nation favoring peace was frequently disturbed by bouts of war. Namely, India-Pakistan War of 1965, Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971 and the Kargil War. For the first time in 1965, Indian Air Force conducted independent raids. They were not supervised or instructed by ground forces but were developing strategies in tandem with the ground forces. By 65, Pakistani General uh, Ayub Khan and his foreign minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto had realized that 62 had demonstrated that India was militarily weak and the only way to gather Jammu and Kashmir once and for all was through a military action. And the first action they undertook was to infiltrate people into Jammu and Kashmir, hoping that the Kashmiris will rise in revolt against the Indian state, and then they will be able to use a military action, which was the infiltration was called Gibraltar, and the military action in the Chamjorian sector, so as to cut off Jammu and Kashmir from the rest of India, was called Operation Grand Slam large number of 40 sorties were flown by these helicopters actually firing guns and miniature rockets at those forces which were intruding and infiltrating. The Air Force roles are classic. The first is to try and win the air war and the second is to be able to defend our own country and the third is to support our army. We did all three. We did all three in varying measures at different times and the percentages differed from as the war progressed. Towards the end, we were only supporting our army. And I think we did reasonably well. I must mention that in both, the Indian Air Force played a stellar role. The joint operations of the Army and the Air Force uh, very, very ably orchestrated in the war. In 1971, it was a showdown between three Canada Sabre MK6 of Pakistan Air Force and four Indian Air Force Gnats at Boira. The Sabres violated the Indo-Bangla border and were countered by the Gnats. Indian Air Force seriously damaged the Sabres and brought the situation under control. I had the privilege to take part in that war, uh, basically in bombing operations, both in the eastern sector and the western sector. I think in the history of Indian strategic thought and action, 1971 war can be really the golden chapter because it's the first time ever in India's history that military force, particularly air power, was used to such telling effect that militarily India was able to create another country. The interesting part was uh, by 71, India had modernized reasonably well. Uh, Pakistan was in a relatively weaker wicket, although its air force was as good as it was in 65. But the problem was because Pakistani technicians were primarily Bengalis and they were not quite, quite loyal to the cause that Pakistani believed in. 1971 war, uh, in the beginning of the year, that is 1971, a new unit got created. It was called at that time the Tactics and Combat Development Establishment. 
the object was that here were a group of relatively experienced pilots who would train themselves and then train the others on the subject of tactics and air combat. But as you know, around March, the problem in Bangladesh, then East Pakistan, had started. So we started our training, and soon we used to be told that, all right, uh, we were operating from Ambala at that time, that, okay, from Ambala, you go and attack Hindon, which is near Delhi, or you go and attack Halwara, which is near uh, Ludhiana. So we suddenly found that we were doing this reasonably well. That a rather difficult task, where they just wanted us to lob the bombs in the general area, we found that we could do it with some accuracy. They couldn't believe that over here, with training, you could carry out in those prehistoric aircraft low-level flying and hit targets by night. After about three decades of light border activities and constant modernization, Indian Air Force again took stringent action when Pakistan soldiers infiltrated line of control between India and Pakistan in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. This operation, named Safed Sagar, is another success story of this relentless force in the sky. Kargil War, I was in charge of the air actions, air operations, but I didn't participate myself. Uh, you know, our entire planning had to be shifted when, at the last minute, when I was told, go, you can now go ahead and attack. They also said, stay on your own side of the LC. That made matters a little difficult for me because that entire planning was made. You see, an air force is an offensive arm. And if we had to win the air war, we had to go across the border and take action. But staying on our own side of the border really tied our hands. It was not so easy. We lost one or two aircraft. We changed our planning systems and we changed our pattern of flying. And we were always on the search to look for some juicy target on our side of the LC that we could attack successfully. And then we found one in Muntodhalo is the name of the place where there was a relatively large uh, ammunition depot, logistics depot, admin depot. And well, we flattened it in one mission of four Mirage aircraft. And that was the absolute turning point because there the administrative machinery got curtailed, their supplies got curtailed, and all the people concerned, they were wondering as to how they can carry on. And we continue to attack these lines of communication is what we say. Basically, it's not lines of communication, it's lines of communication for supplies. And if you could hit those lines of communication, you are hindering and interdicting the passage of supplies to the forward troops. And if you do that, you are winning. And that's what happened. With time, the Indian Air Force progressed leaps and bounds. Indian Air Force forayed into relief operations too. Operation Rahat, where Indian Air Force extracted around 2,000 pilgrims stranded due to a flash flood, became one of the biggest civil rescue operations in the world. Putting itself in league with nations like USA, UK, France, Israel and many others, Indian Air Force now inducts women in combat role. After years of discussion and debate, 2016 marks the commissioning of first batch of three women fighter pilots. Put on record that I was very closely involved with the induction of women in the Air Force. Uh, in fact, ours, Indian Air Force was the first service to induct women. Uh, that was in, sometimes in 91, 92. And I do remember just for uh, a lighter, uh, you know, a coverage of the subject, that we went to the National Institute of Fashion Design 
to ensure that our lady officers are, uh, are wear a proper dress so they don't look unladylike and yet are solid air, air persons, pilots. In actual fact, the first lot of women are at the moment the penultimate stage of their training as fighter pilots and I think that should all go well. Uh, in so far as uh, women in other branches of the Indian Air Force is concerned, may I once again tell the viewers that the largest complement of women officers in the armed forces is in the Air Force, not in the Army and the Navy. Mind you, the Army strength is four times uh, in uh, IAF strength. Uh, Navy is about little over half IAF strength. So Indian Air Force is way ahead. We also found their performance as officers was in no way sec second to uh, the men. So they also, in many ways, lay out, lay down standards. You're in a, you know, multi-gender environment, so the men tend to then uh, prove themselves as being better because they're competing with women. And it's likewise for the women because they feel that they must be uh, get the better of uh, the man. Two thousand sixteen also saw the induction of India's much awaited indigenous fighter jet Tejas. As MiGs twenty one are turning obsolete, Tejas are expected to replace them. We now have this aeroplane which is ours. It is ours in every respect. And over a period of time, we will improve on it. And when we do, we will have an aircraft which is far superior to anything that would have happened elsewhere. I think the viewers need to understand that Tejas has not been inducted into the Air Force. Yes, ceremonially, yes, most certainly, two aircraft formed the 45 squadron of the Indian Air Force, uh, which, has, which was number plated earlier and has now become active again with two aircraft on its charge. It's been located in Bangalore, which itself indicates that the teething problems in increasing the numbers of that squadron from 2 to 16, which should be the minimum number the squadron must have, those have yet to be resolved and it will be many, many years, at least two to three years, before they just can be effectively flying in the Indian skies. With its eyes set on future, Indian Air Force is working with other nations to develop technologically advanced fighters and drones. The nation is proud of Indian Air Force and salutes its flight to glory.